There must be a God somewhere. Indeed, there is. Let us pray. Almighty God, our brother Jesus and the Holy Spirit that fills us with the transforming power of your love. We ask that you be present with us in this moment, in this place, with these people. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, may they be righteous in your sight. All this we pray. Amen. All right, friends, please be seated. All right. A few weeks ago, we had Habakkuk. What was that? Oh, no, 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 no. It's not going to get us across the, the Red Sea, my friends. Habakkuk. One more time. Habakkuk. That's the way I'm saying it. Okay. We got a new one for you today, and that is Katasarka. Katasarka. Ooh, I love that. You don't even know what you're saying. It's delicious. <laughs> Katasarka. It is a Greek, uh, two words that are brought together, and it means according to the flesh. It is what Paul is using, the Greek Paul is using when he says that we are of the flesh, when we make choices about living in the flesh. It is also what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about living in the flesh. Now, he's talking, Jesus, about basically the Ten Commandments, right? You've heard it said, but I tell you. Now, there's nothing new in that. That's how rabbis talk, right? Each rabbi has their own kind of teaching their own spin or their own take or gloss on the Ten Commandments or on the law or Holy Scripture. And that uh, gloss is called their yoke, their yoke. And we know that a yoke is um, it's an instrument, a tool that we put on a beast of burden that we can control the beast of burden. That's the same thing with a set of rules like the Ten Commandments. It is a yoke that we put on. I wear a yoke right here to remind me, there's no reason why it's around my neck. It's because it reminds me of what I believe, of who I am, and how I've come to believe and have my being in this community and out in the world. That's my yoke. Your yoke is to be love-spreading difference makers in all circumstances, with all people, at all times, right? That's our yoke. Jesus at one point says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His yoke, meaning his way, his way of living, is easy. Life can be easy. That's what he's saying. When we choose the good life, the good life. That's what Deuteronomy, that's what Moses is telling us today. Choose life. Don't choose katasarka the way of the flesh. Choose life so that you may live. And Jesus takes it one step further and says, so that you may have life, and life abundant. Life abundant. Not just any old kind of tired life. Not just skating on through. Not just getting barely there by white-knuckling it. No, Jesus is talking about a life that is an abundant life full of love, full of peace, full of security, the kind that brings peace. The whole making shalom of God is what he's talking about. Not the peace that the world can give, but the peace that he gives. Okay? So he's talking about the Ten Commandments here, and he's really talking about the first five. You have heard it said, don't commit adultery, don't um, give false witness, don't swear, all those kinds of things. Now, those are actions. The first five books, uh, or the first five uh, rules, the commandments in the Decalogue, in the Ten Commandments, are about doing. They're about doing. Thou shalt not murder, right? That's a doing, and that's not good. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. These are things that we do either by our bodies or by our words. And so he is putting a new gloss on that. He says, you have heard it said, thou shalt not murder. Well, that's a good rule. It helps us all kind of live together in some kind of peace, at least the peace that we know nobody's going to kill us. 
we hope, right? So he's saying it's not just about what you do. It's about who you are being in your heart. So Jesus is taking this to a whole new level. This is not just about the doing. We can all agree that murder is a bad idea. We can all agree that it is not okay. But what happens when we don't murder somebody, literally, but we have murderous thoughts in our heart about someone we love? Even if we don't speak the words, even if we don't take an action, Jesus is saying that the intention that you have, what is happening in your heart, and think your heart and mind, if your intention is to wish that person ill, well, I hope a truck runs them over. They'll get what they deserve. Or I hope that that person gets what they deserve, the just deserts. That is an intention that Jesus is calling out and saying, you've heard that it's not good to murder. I'm telling you, it happens. Those murderous thoughts happen. They start to form way back in your heart and your mind before you get to the murder part. And the same thing with lying and deception. The same thing with broken relationships, with cheating. The same thing happens with cheating somebody out of um, what is owed to them. Those kinds of things, when they happen, that is only the result of something that has taken heart, taken hold, taken root in our hearts and minds, and we need to step back into that. And Jesus is saying, we need to look at our hearts. Long before we murder, or we lie, or we cheat, we need to look at our hearts. So are you into looking at your heart right now? Are you? That's what is required. Jesus says, choose life. Moses says, choose life. Choose whole-making relationship. Choose love-spreading difference-making. Choose to be a blesser and not a curser. Even when blessing is not to be found and all you get is cursing. Do not return the curse with a curse, but return the curse with a blessing. Now you say, George, that is high altitude. That is hard work. Returning a blessing, or returning a curse with a blessing? Is he nuts? He's like, oh, well, he wears one of those collars. He's some righteous person. Oh, he practices that stuff all day long. Oh, it's easy for him. Think again. I am human just like all of you, and so are you just like me. So the point is, we need to practice that, right? We need to practice it long before we get to the, oh, that just flew out of my mouth and that's not who I am. I wish I could take it back. We need to step back and we need to have the mantra in our minds this week that I am going to be a blesser, not a curser. I'm going to be a blesser, not a curser. When that person curses me, when they cut me off on the freeway, or when they give me the side eye at the dinner table, or they do my favorite one, the silent treatment, that's withdrawal. When they give you the silent treatment, or for those people who are born in the 21st century in the crowd today, when they ghost you, right? Oh, Sawyer's like, oh, I know all about that. (laughs) We don't ghost them back. I know, it's crazy, right? We don't ghost them back? 
An eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind? We bless. We bless instead of curse. We don't withdraw. One of the things that I grew up with was withdrawal. I grew up with the silent treatment. It was the most effective arsenal that my mother had in her bag. She could give the silent treatment like nobody's business, right? My mother used it effectively, but I also picked that up as a tool for living and being in relationship. And my wife, Karen, can tell you that doesn't feel so great, the silent treatment. Now, my mother had a transformational moment happen in her life four years ago when she was diagnosed with stage four melanoma. And she was brought low. And thanks be to God and modern technology, she has transformed into a cancer-free person. Thanks be to God. And the best part is, her heart is transformed. Her heart has been transformed by the circumstances of her life. And she had the opportunity to go one way or the other, to be the creature that she had evolved to be, or she could be Jesus' new creature. And she chose life. She chose life. And she is a transformed person. And she doesn't use the silent treatment anymore. And neither do I. Neither do I. Now that doesn't mean that our hearts don't get hurt or our flowers don't get stepped on and we have to sometimes kind of process that and we do that with silence and we retreat a little bit. That's fine. But the silent treatment has everything to do with the intention. Oh, I'm going to hurt that person because they hurt me. That is returning a curse for a curse. And we're about returning a blessing for a curse. A blessing for a curse. So what I want to offer you this week is a challenge in terms of homework. I've offered this challenge before, but it is a, it's such high altitude work, but it is really good work. All of us do one of two things in relationship. When they're not working out for us, when we get hurt, when we don't, things aren't going the ways that we want them to in relationship, we do one of two things. We either attack or we withdraw. When we attack, we say things we don't really mean. Maybe we mean them. But we say things we probably should keep to ourselves. When we attack, we literally become bullies. Right? We, it's going to be my will. Will, I'm going to push this on through, and you're going to see it my way. It never happens in my house. <laughs> right? Then withdrawal. Somebody hurts us, and we give them the silent treatment, the cold shoulder. Right? Right? Nothing is worse than sitting across the dinner table with somebody that you have decided to inflict the silent treatment upon. You know who it hurts the most? You. This week, I want you to continue to keep in your mind this challenge to be mindful of those moments when you get hurt, when somebody hurts your feelings, or you feel a sense of competition with another person, right? When you feel a sense of threat when you feel fight or flight come on, right? You get that thing in your gut where it tightens up and the cortisol starts flowing and you start seeing red. If you can, by the grace of God and practice, in those moments before you say the word, before you go to act, stop and say, I am a blesser, not a curser. I am a blesser. I am a blesser. It's a mantra that we should all take on this week. I am a blesser. Sawyer, can you say it for me? I'm a blesser. Amaryllis, will you say it for me? I'm a blesser. 
Right? Judy? She, I am a blesser. I like that. Yes. I am a blesser. So that moment happens. This is the moment before. Remember, it's not about the axe. <laughs> it's about before, when we have the murderous thoughts. We go, no, 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 no. I am a blesser. That's who God called me to be. I'm a blesser, and I choose life. Amen. <laughs>